Welcome to DC Smith Science. Make sure to check the watching guide below in the description to skip around where it's pertinent for you. Electricity covered very quickly in seconds. Importantly, electricity consists of electrons. Chemistry happens, introductory level chemistry happens on the, at the electron level, more specifically the valence electron, the outer shell of those electrons. Metals, specifically transition metals, are very good and they act as conductors. Why? They have these electrons that can move around within. This is why if electricity is made of electrons and these can move around quickly, it can conduct a current. So insulators cannot. So things that are like plastic, wood, glass, those things do not conduct electricity. Therefore, a lot of times, that's why all your wires are typically wrapped in um, some type of plastic or rubber so insulation. Metals have electrons that are not tightly bound, free electrons. That's not totally true. So the main thing I want to show you here, this is uh, Ohm's law, volt. Voltage equals current times resistance. Remember, the main thing I want you to notice here is that resistance and voltage affect the current. So the I is little here, it's changing. So if I add more batteries, I can physically do that. I can put more batteries in this thing. So that's going to also increase the current. Another way I can increase the current is this, let's say I keep this down to three here. And if I decrease the resistance, obviously my current is going to go faster. Remember, current is how many coulombs, buckets of electrons, are passing a point per second. So these two I, current, is affected by resistance and voltage. We can manipulate voltage with adding more batteries. We can manipulate resistance by adding resistors in the circuit. Series versus parallel. First thing I'm going to talk about is the voltage. So remember, a volt is a joule of energy attached to a coulomb or bucket of electrons. So notice in the parallel, each, let's say these are two light bulbs here, each light bulb is going to get 12 volts of energy. Here's how I think of it. It goes back to the battery to get more joules of energy. That's what a volt is, joules of energy attached to a bucket of electrons, a coulomb. So it can go straight back and get more energy here doesn't share with another light bulb. This is an oversimplification, but the analogy will hopefully help. If you look on the one over here, the series, it has to share. So if it has this light bulb, this is a light bulb, it has to give six joules of energy here, six joules of energy here before it can go back to the light bulb. Next one I want to talk about is the current. This shouldn't, so in a series circuit, it's pretty easy. Think of a lazy river. It's not changing. It's going to go the same current the entire time like a lazy river you're on out with an inner tube. Okay. This parallel, now think if you're splitting it up, if you're diverting water from a river, the flow is going to be not as strong where you diverted it. So now it went from two amps, two coulombs, passing a point per second, to one. And then when they meet back up right here, when these two rivers, if you will, meet back up, they'll get back up to two amps. So the current changes in a series in the parallel. Finally, resistance. So the resistance is very simple in a series. You just add them up. Think about it. It should be easier. The reason I remember this, it's simpler because there's one flow. So one flow, you just got to add them up. Now, this one is more complex. The reason we have to divide by all the resistance, one over the inverse, due to the fact that it's splitting up, it's slowing down, speeding up. But remember, this is more of a complex scenario. Therefore, it needs a more complex equation to Help understand that to derive that so that's how resistance differs and I hope you already know this one but a series circuit classic example are uh, Christmas lights one Christmas light goes out they all go out that's because it's in a series circuit so if there's a break anywhere in that path everything goes out because it's all connected this is basically a generator this is going to take kinetic energy and it's going to turn into electrical energy right so I don't believe you, Mr. Smith, you're a liar. The world is flat and science is not real. So, well, let me just prove you wrong with this. Let's show some data. What this is doing, I want to talk about how this actually works, is this is taking that kinetic energy. And if you look in here, this has a motor in this, and this is wrapped in magnets. And a solenoid is basically a wire 
wrapped in something. So this is an example of a solenoid right here. So I just created a generator. I generated electricity taking motion, kinetic energy, some will say mechanical force, and turning that into electrical energy. So if you know how a motor works, you know how a generator works. If you know how a generator works, you know how a motor works. So what I'm gonna do now, right, I've hooked this up to the batteries here. So now I've taken the energy, the joules of energy from this battery, and it's moving this motor here. So now I've just created the super simple um, direct current motor, okay? If I switch the poles here, if I switch these two down here, if I switch, notice the direction this is going. So you switch the polarity, that just is it's switching the flow of the electrons going through it, okay? Uh, so that polarity could be important as well. I'm going to push electricity, these free floating electrons in here. Watch what happens. Notice it's staying pretty still. Wait for it to reset. I'm going to crank this. You'll be able to hear it. Watch what happens. So this is way, way, way back in the day, how they proved experimentally that if you put current through a wire, I just put in current through that wire, it, it, um, it, it creates a magnetic field. DC motor. And so guess what? If I wrap more coils around this, like here, I am creating more current if I have more coils, and then that's going to create more of a magnetic field when I put through this, this through there. So this is my magnets on, on here's one, and then there's the other permanent magnet. So that's creating a magnetic field going from north to south. Whoops. So then what I want to do is I'm going to connect this, make sure everything's touching, right? And so now you notice it's moving because I have a closed circuit. This is a very simple series circuit here, right? So if I open this up right here, let's pull this back. Well, now I have an open circuit. Now the electrons can't flow from there to there to here, thus not creating the magnetic field in here to interact. But if I close it, now it's going, right? Because remember, this is a solenoid. That thing in the middle is called a solenoid. So that's a symbol in a multimeter. What is a multimeter? Uh, this is how you can measure direct current and alternating current. Those are the symbols there, okay? This also has ohms, which is resistance. And it also has some other stuff, uh, different types of uh, amps. So notice how they have that magnet moving constantly. It's just making those electrons switch back and forth. So, so the ones on the top in the black and red are both DC currents. Notice the, electric, the path of the electrons coming out of the negative end, right? Let's just say it's going that way, the electron path. And then if I flip that, if I flip that battery, just turn around the other way, those the electrons, the flow of the current would be the opposite way. So they're opposite directions, right? So essentially how an AC current is happening, this, it doesn't happen with the battery, obviously. This is the visualization because I think you all can understand the flow of electrons in uh, a battery, a direct current. But then the battery's like flipping, sort of say, constantly, right? So that battery's flipping on an AC current, which is written in that blue color down there. So if I said it's 120 volts at 60 hertz, right? That means it's switching back and forth 60 times every second, 60 hertz. Because remember, frequency is hertz. Hertz is measured in waves or oscillations per second. So that means it's just fluctuating back and forth. And that's standard what comes out of your wall, 120 volts at 60 hertz. And so that back and forth just means that those electrons can just move back and forth right there by your, um, by your bulb. So those electrons just go just kind of go like this, push, 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 right by the light bulb. It's way more efficient um, than the direct current. Go, hit it. Oh no, are you serious? No way. Are you serious? 